I'm here at the March meeting of the American Physical Society in March 2015 with David Von Bach of Teach Spin, a company that builds experimental laboratory demonstration apparatus, here to talk about diamagnetism. Uh, David, I tell the students in exploring quantum physics that magnetism is essentially an effect of quantum mechanics. Without quantum mechanics, there'd be no magnetism. Do you agree with that? I do, and there's a theorem from the 1920s that, to uh, people's surprise, showed that classical physics, Newtonian physics, can't account for any kind of magnetism at all. Right. So the, the topic that we discuss primarily in the course is diamagnetism, this universally repulsive force. And I understand that your firm is making a very simple apparatus to demonstrate diamagnetism using the measurement of a force on an ordinary sample material. So perhaps you could run th through that sure. with us. Sure. The sample here in this case is just a little bit of water. <laughs> about three centimeters of water in a plastic uh, cubette. And uh, it's on a stick because I'm about to have that water encounter a strong magnetic field. The magnet involved is a permanent magnet in an iron structure. Oh, so this is a, one of these neodymium magnets, very hard, hard permanent magnet. There's two magnetic disks there facing each other. Is that right? So okay. there's a strong field region in the space between those disks and a weak field region elsewhere in okay. the world. Now those magnets are attached to a frame and it's sitting on top of, is this an ordinary scale? It's a jeweler scale. Of jeweler scale. 200 gram capacity and one milligram resolution. And it's indicating that the mass of the magnet structure and its support is about 180 grams. Okay. So do I understand what you're going to do is put this sample down between the magnets and that, that there'll be a mechanical force applied by the magnets on the substance, uh, which by Newton's whatever it is, third, third law, law, thank you, uh, will exert another force on the frame and that will then increase the, the apparent weight of the frame as far as the scale is concerned. That's right. Let's see. It's a very simple mechanical demonstration of this magnetic force. Right. So the, the uh, control group is 180.425 grams and I'll get the sample into its little holder okay. and bring it down smoothly into the vicinity of the magnet. So the indicated mass stays the same until the water gets near. And okay. here, let me see if I can capture. Yeah, okay, now I see it going up. The indicated mass has gone up by 10 milligrams, 11 milligrams, from the 180.425 to 180.436. Now, if you keep going down, it would pass out of the magnetic field, and the weight should go back down again to its fact, original value. In fact, the weight will go below its original value oh, now that I have the water I see, below because the it's magnet. pushing up on the magnets now, now effectively. Up on the magnet. oh, so let's awesome. go through that logic again. When the bulk of the water is up above the magnet, the water, being diamagnetic, is repelled by the magnet. Therefore, by Newton's third law, the water, as a diamagnet, repels the magnet, pushing it away from the water, which means pushing it downward, making the magnet seem 10 or 11 milligrams heavier than it was. Okay, that's and, great. And the same reasoning, when I have the bulk of the water below the magnet, uh, the water, being diamagnetic, is repelled by the magnet, by Newton's third law. The water must be pushing up on the magnet, making it seem lighter, and sure enough, its apparent mass has changed from 180.425 to 180.416. So even something as weakly diamagnetic as water gives a detectable signal. It's just solve the modes. Okay, thank you very much, David.